welcome. Joining me now is Keith Phillips of Piedmont Lithium. We're going to talk about your incredible project that you have down in North Carolina. Tell me a little bit about this project. Uh, what is it about this deposit that makes it unique and one that you believe will play an important role in the lithium market in the U.S. going forward? It mostly comes down to the location. So we're in North Carolina, about 30 miles west of Charlotte. Uh, I hadn't known before I got involved in the company, all the lithium in the world came from this region from the 1950s to the 1980s. So it's a very prolific lithium region. Uh, the world's biggest lithium company, Albemarle, is headquartered in Charlotte. They operated a mine in this area for 30 years. Livent, the number five company in the world, operated a mine for 43 years. They both still operate large chemical plants. So we're in a uh, you know, wonderful part of North Carolina, which is a great state to operate in on a very prolific lithium mineral belt uh, with pure spodumene mineralogy, which mm -hmm. is what you want, which is actually quite rare, and exceptionally low operating costs sort of around, uh, around okay. the whole project. Let's touch on why yeah. spodumene is so important and, and the lithium that winds up becoming the product that uh, is derived from it. Sure, so lithium comes, right now probably 60% of the world's lithium comes from spodumene. That's all coming right now from Australia, 55 or 60%. Uh, 30, 35 percent comes from brine from Chile and Argentina. Uh, brine producers uh, typically uh, produce a carbonate project for right. product first, lithium carbonate, which is the most common product today. Uh, spodumene is a lower cost way to produce lithium hydroxide, which is what is increasingly being demanded. So a number of observers think hydroxide demand will outstrip carbonate by 2025 at the latest. And the reason for that is if you want a longer range car, which Tesla does and VW and Ford and GM and everyone making electric cars wants to you know, generally want to optimize mm -hmm. range. You need to use more nickel in the cathode. When yep. you use a certain amount of nickel in the cathode, you have to use hydroxide. Yes. The lowest cost way to produce hydroxide is from spodumene. Yeah. So again, right now all the, lithium, all the spodumene in the world comes from Australia. There are deposits in other parts of the world, including Canada, uh, Africa, Europe, South America, but we have the only spodumene deposit in, North, in the United States, and mm -hmm. it's a far lower cost and more strategic place to operate than some of the other regions, so uh, pretty exciting for us. It's my understanding that, uh, that lithium hydroxide is a more stable product as well, because there are sometimes there are issues about the stability of the battery uh, when you're using lithium carbonate. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, I think there are, there are many different cathode chemistries. Mm -hmm. um, and you might have heard the acronyms NMC, NCA, LFP, et cetera. They all use different blends. They all use a relatively similar amount of lithium, say 10% of the cathode material. Mm -hmm. uh, and they use a blend of uh, nickel, manganese, cobalt, uh, iron, uh, other aluminum for Tesla, depending on what you use. And so, and when people are making the cathode and making the battery, they're trying to optimize a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. Range, energy density, range. Uh, cost, uh, stability, uh, right. et cetera. And uh, I'm not sure carbonate is necessarily more unstable or less stable than hydroxide. I think okay. it's really a, more of a chemistry project for the cathode producers. Yeah, okay, thanks for clearing that up. Yeah. You know, one of the other things that, like, you point out the fact that you are in the United States and the American battery market, of course, is going to continue to grow. Yeah. The way that we see Tesla developing. We also see an interesting change happening globally uh, with the tensions between the United States and China. The United States is focusing more inward. So how important is that going to be in the lithium market that you are an American-based uh, you know, facility? We think it's very important. And in speaking to customers, I think it's pretty clear it's very important to them. It's not because people are afraid of China. It's that you know, right now the market relies too much on China for a lot of things. So China produces probably two thirds of the battery materials, cathode materials and batteries. And that's a lot, and mm -hmm. China produces about 25% of the cars, but two thirds of the batteries. So if you are a, a German or American mm -hmm. car company looking to produce cars in the United States or Europe, and you have to rely on China, uh, and, and you'll always, China will always be part of the sort of base load, as I describe it, supply source for people, but to the extent they can get material from other parts of the world, they'd like that. They'd mm -hmm. like to diversify their supply sources. Uh, for American car producers, whether they're Americans or transplants, to the extent they're producing cars, particularly in the eastern U.S., mm -hmm. if they can get lithium from North Carolina, right in the heart of, of Auto Alley, that has a massive impact on their supply chain. Just mm -hmm. you know, local supply chain being better, it's far better from a sustainability perspective. Our transport distances in the in the future from our lithium project in North Carolina to a car plant in South Carolina or Alabama or Tennessee. Right 
will be you know, tens perhaps, certainly no more than hundreds of miles, versus right now lithium travels generally for a Tesla 25 or 30,000 miles. It starts in, starts in Argentina, comes up to say North Carolina to be converted into lithium hydroxide, goes over to Japan to go into a cathode, and it, it comes to Nevada to go into the battery, and then goes into uh, Fremont, California to go into a Tesla. That's the current supply chain, and that's okay, but yeah. people would like to shorten it. 25,000 miles is a long way. We could shorten that by well over 90%. Wow. And also, we're in an unusual time right at the moment as we're doing this interview. There is the coronavirus, and it ha is having a significant impact in China, which can disrupt uh, supply lines, and it's having that same impact around the world. And so, if you're in the United States, does that not, once again, help to uh, reinforce or consolidate your position in that market. It does, and uh, and coronavirus is one of the you know those it's one of, a black swan event. No one knew it was coming. It right. happened happened to originate in China. Uh, you know that happens to have a big impact on a lot of industrial supply chains, certainly including batteries mm -hmm. and including electric cars. So Tesla's new car plant in Shanghai shut down for a period. I believe it's open again now. Um, so for sure, people want diversification. People mm -hmm. want sources of supply from different parts of the world and different countries. Ideally, they want them close by. Mm -hmm. Big car companies want their windshields and their windshield wipers to come from around the corner, not from across the, across the globe. Could be a virus, could be tariffs, could be storms, could be something else. So yeah. uh, it's really good for us. And we believe, as you mentioned, I mean, the biggest battery plant in the world is in the United States. It's in Nevada. Two very large battery plants are being built in the eastern U.S. by uh, SK Innovation and LG, two large Korean groups. Right. Uh, others are coming for sure. We're in the heart of that. Uh, that's really good. They'll undoubtedly be interested in our material, mm -hmm. uh, and that's, those are conversations we'll have. Europe is another market for us where we're a lot closer to Europe than China is. Uh, mm -hmm. Europe's probably moving a little quicker. Beyond Tesla, Europe's probably moving a little quicker because of CO2 emissions penalties that are looming. Especially yeah. in France. Yeah, yeah. France, and but you're seeing yeah. battery plants and cathode plants. Tesla's going to build a new yeah. plant in, in Germany, but you're seeing all over yeah, Hungary, Poland, uh, et cetera. So yeah. we could be a really competitive supplier over there as well. So let's come back to your property. Where are yeah. we at? So we're, uh, I'd say we're at the advanced development stage. So our, our goal is to be shovel ready by the end of 2020. Mm -hmm. So uh, right now we have a scoping study that's done to a great uh, level of detail uh, that shows fantastic economics. Uh, over the course of this year, what we want to do is release uh, the hydroxide metallurgical test work we're doing now at SGS Lakefield up here in Ontario. That'll be completed in the next uh, several weeks and announced hopefully by the end of March. We'll announce a pre-feasibility study for our chemical plant by the end of April. So we're going to have a mine and concentrate plant to produce spodumene concentrate and a mm -hmm. chemical plant to produce lithium hydroxide. That study will be out at the end of April. And then what we'd like to do is, is uh, do all the work needed to complete a DFS by the end of this year, mm -hmm. definitive feasibility study, and also fully permit the project. So there, we received our a very important permit at the end of last year, which is our 404 permit from the Army Corps of Engineers. That's the only federal permit we need for the mining concentrate plant. We're doing the background studies now for the state mining permit and also for the uh, chemical plant uh, permit will require, permits will require. We hope to apply for those um, in the spring this year and we think we'll receive them this year as well. So it would be great from our perspective to be shovel ready by the end of the year, which uh, there are a lot of lithium projects. There aren't many that are actually that advanced. And, uh, and we think the timing will be excellent as we, you know, the market, we think it's bottomed and we think the market's recovering strongly in, uh, over that time period. So how important is the uh, relationship that you now have with Hatch? Uh, Hatch is, gr is great. They're a leader, they're a leader in the, uh, you know, the mining industry generally. They're a leader certainly in lithium chemical plant studies. Mm -hmm. So they're doing the work on uh, a big project in Western Australia called Covalent. It was pr previously owned by Kidman. Kidman's now sold themselves. But for your Australian listeners, Kidman was a very successful public company. They're sort of a role model for us, spodumene to hydroxide, integrated. Big asset, we think we're in a better location in North Carolina, but, but uh, Hatch is doing that work. Mm -hmm. Hatch did the work in North Carolina for Albemarle a few years back when they were looking at putting their Kings Mountain mine back into production and uh, producing hydroxide locally. So. So uh, they're terrific, they're leaders in the field and we enjoy working with them. Well, in doing a little research about Hatch, because I was really not familiar with them, sustainability is at the core of what their mission uh, yeah. is. And so it looks like it's a really nice fit. Yeah, sustain sustainability is interesting. At first, you know, you hear about sustainability, we, we hear about it now every day. Uh, when we're speaking to potential customers, car companies, battery companies, they care about 
you know, how are we designing our project? What are our, how are we thinking about sustainability? Obviously, internal electric vehicles are cleaner mm -hmm. than internal combustion engine cars through kind of the life cycle of the product. Uh, uh, Spodumene is preferred by some of the big German car companies to brine from an environmental sustainability perspective. That's good for us. Uh, and uh, we're also, but we're, you know, we're operating in North Carolina, which is the second most important solar state in the United States. So mm -hmm. solar is something we're looking into as a, as a way to power some of our uh, equipment. So sustainability is key also to investors. Everywhere I go with institutional investors, they ask these questions, they're focused on it. Mm -hmm. And if you don't measure up, and they have any score companies, and if you don't measure up, they just won't buy your stock, whether they like it or not. So it's really important to be focused on it. Yeah. It's, you can no longer just appear to be green. You actually have to be able to show what that life cycle valuation is. Yeah, it's very, is. No, it's very tangible. I, <laughs> yeah. was in, I was in the Midwest last week, with uh, two weeks ago, with an investor, and they have a 25-point scale, and he kind of walked me through it. And uh, some, of those are, some of those points are things you can impact, some of them you can't, uh, but it's good. We, we think we broadly score very well on that. So it's, it's, that, from our perspective, is good. We call ourselves now a clean energy company. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a mine, we're going to have a chemical plant, but really we're going to be help feeding the clean energy revolution in the vehicle business. So that leads me to my final question. What do you think are going to be some of the trends that we're going to see in the resource sector and how important will this whole concept of, of being environmentally sustainable be a part of that equation uh, as, as trends unfold over the next few years? Yeah, that's a good question. I was an investment banker for covering mining companies for a long time, and I worked with a broad, broad array of companies. Now I'm really working with one, which is our company. So yeah. I'm not, I'm not as, I'm not as aware of what others are working on. I know some of the issues they face. Tailings dams are a, an issue for people. We're not going to have a tailings dam. We don't need to have one. We'll do dry stack tailings, etc. Our project uh, from the start, I mean, we've sort of focused on having a relatively small footprint. Uh, you know, we're operating in North Carolina. We're in a developed part of the world. We're 30 miles west of Charlotte. We've known from day one it would be important to be responsible, and that's the only sensible way to do business uh, from our perspective and from that of our neighbors. So, uh, you know, we just we think about that every day, and we're focused on that kind of every step of the way in our project. Wow. Yeah. Well, it sounds like an exciting project. It looks like you've got your eye on, on a pretty nice trajectory here, and I wish you uh, the best of luck. Thank you very Come much. Come back and Enjoy give us an update next year. Okay? We'll do that. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thanks very much. We'll see you next time.